Welcome back. Dahlia just said something that could totally change this whole case. There was lightning. Your Honor, there is a problem with the witness's testimony. What do you mean? Didn't you notice? She said there was lightning, correct? Yes. What about it? Well, lightning is actually a large discharge of electricity in the atmosphere. Am I right? Now's not the time for the science lesson, Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor. Anyway, since the cause of death was electrocution, isn't it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? A bolt of lightning? Yeah, back to the future. Uh, hmm. I must admit that the thought had not occurred to me. Oh, clearly. Does any thought occur to you? Just what kind of thoughts do occur to this guy anyway? Thank you, Mia. This entire case is built on the premise that Mr. Dog Swallow was murdered. But the very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believes that Miss Swallow was, in fact, the victim of a stray bolt. Oh, yeah, It appears the defense may be onto something, I think. Could it be that the death was actually accidental? All right. You did it, Mia. It would leave trace remarks across... Remarks? Marks. Just marks. Not remarks. Marks. Across the body. You get, like, these weird patterns across your body. I'd say look it up. Uh, up to you. I'll be taking that... Not... Guilty. I'm hurt that you have such a low opinion of me, Miss Faye. Huh? I'm not a fool, you know. I'm, mm. The prosecution has done its research, Your Honor. We found that there were no lightning strikes on that day at that location. What? What's more, we have evidence that the electrical cable is definitely linked to this case. Uh, evidence, Mr. Payne? Well, what is this evidence? This affidavit. Affidavit? And who is this affidavit? I don't know an affidavit. Affidavit? Do you mean affidavit? I know an affidavit. But where is this affidavit from? The pharmacology students who were conducting experiments in their labs that day. Allow me to read out the court. To the court, the testimony of the pharmacology students. All equipment in the labs lost power all of a sudden at around 3 p.m. that day. Is it a blackout? All of the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. You're saying the equipment lost power because... Precisely. They lost power because of the severed electrical cable, which could have been hit by a bolt of lightning and severed, but you know, whatever. The power outage occurred at approximately 3 p.m., which fits with the time of death listed in the autopsy report. Exactly. In other words, the victim died as a result of touching the severed electrical cable. What's the time of... Uh, uh, on, on his watch again? It was like 3.05, was it? Oh, let, 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 let's see here. I've got, I've got to check. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, it's gone 3. It's 3.05, so it's like... He, he must have died after 3. Yeah? According to the students, the cables were very old. Well, there's a disaster waiting to happen. They're planning on having them replaced in the near future. It, it, clearly, they should have done it sooner. Hmm, I see. Apparently, the cables had become so brittle that even the smallest bump would cause them to break, said the umbrella. Student's testimony added to the court record. Hmm, the old power cable broke due to some sort of impact on... Happy April, wasn't it? It breaks my head because it's backwards. Anyway, it's 9th of April at 2.55pm. However, there is one thing that troubles me. I haven't had my afternoon nap. If the cable could have been broken by any small bump, then it wouldn't have snapped if it had been bumped into, correct? Well, uh, I, I suppose you could say that. Hmm, Miss Faye? Do you have any thoughts regarding the cause of the severed cable? Your Honor... 
I don't like how this is looking one bit. I have to come up with something to try to regain some momentum. If it pleases the court, the Plants would like to state its opinion. Well then, let's hear it. Who or what is it that caused the cable to break? Hmm. Hmm. But I, um, hmm. Like, I, I feel like the umbrella hit the cable. So, um, hmm. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go through. It's the, it's the attorney's badge. No. Um, no, that's fine. Let's have a look. Because it feels like the umbrella's close enough to being up there, but I feel like that would have been burnt or something, or melted, or... Maybe, could it, but the bump could have caused it to dislodge. Hmm. And that's the time of death. The time of death does not fit at all. With with any of this, it's like... So we've, we've got like 305 there, we've got 255 there, and we've got 3 there. So it's like, which is it? Calculate. I do. It's in his hands. The umbrella makes sense to me. I found broken near an electrical pole at the crime scene. The victim fell on top of his umbrella. There was a loud sound when this happened. Could be the sound. I, let me check. Well, where he is, he could have pushed him into the pole, couldn't he? Like, that could have done it. Like, if he pushed him backwards into the pole that caused the pole to bump which caused the cable to snap the cable came flying down and hit him in the front and then he fell forward like he could end up like that so that makes sense so we've got the umbrella or the sound that phoenix heard uh, still want to know what's in that bottle whatever's in the bottle is going to be important probably to whatever like I think it's related to um, Mia's case that was a year ago, so... Student's testimony, the old power cable broke due to some sort of impact. I feel it's the push. Like, the shove. That's the thing that makes sense here, because I pushed him into the pole, based on where his body is. The umbrella is l likely, but not not as likely as the, as the push, I feel. Your Honor. Please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. The defendant's testimony. He said that after he pushed the victim, he heard a loud, sharp noise. Now, this happened at around 3 p.m., correct? Yes, uh, that sounds right. Wait, are you saying that... The lab equipment lost power at 2.55 p.m., which fits right in Mr. Wright's timeline. In other words, it was Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. There we go. Oh, it's amazing. What about the umbrella? Yes, the prosecution also came to the same conclusion. Oh, it was that very shove that caused Mr. Swallow to be electrocuted. Attention! I'm afraid I can't agree with you there, Mr. Payne. What's that supposed to mean? Take a good look at where the victim landed after being shoved. See the umbrella? It's by the electrical pole. It's a huge umbrella, apparently. That's right. The victim banged into that pole as a result of being pushed. It was that impact that caused the cable to break. Hmm. That makes sense, and then the victim was electrocuted, which is accidental death. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but no. It doesn't make sense at all. If the victim was shoved into the far pole, then he couldn't have been electrocuted by this severed cable in the foreground here. Oh, so they were over there. Okay. In other words, someone other than my client must have electrocuted the victim. Or he just was an idiot and walked into it. Order! Order in the court! Yes. Ah, the lamentations of my enemy. How I've longed to hear them. Oh my. It's true. The defense is absolutely correct. There doesn't seem to be any way the defendant... Um... Mr. Judge, sir. 
May I say something? The Madame Maternie's explanation. She said some things that are a little different than I remember them. What the? They're different. Please, just once more. May I please testify one last time? Please, Mr. Judge? Oh, of course, it's all right. Just go right ahead and give your new testimony. This is it. She's finally starting to show her true colors. What I witnessed part two. Like, what are you doing? And clearly it's so... Like, this is the thing now. It's like, the electrocution, fine, whatever. That's, that's the side thing. What is going on with her and the necklace? That's what I want to know right now. The truth is, Fini pushed him twice. The first time was into the electrical pole. That's when the cable broke. Uh-huh. Then Dougie tried his best to run away from him. But Feeney caught up and crashed him in, into him from behind. The cables snapping and Dougie being electrocuted it all occurred in less than a minute. Kind of. His watch stopped at 3.05. Hmm, so after being shoved, the victim got up and tried to run away. And that is when the defendant pushed him for the second time. I'm so sorry, Feeney. But I... I just have to tell the truth, you liar. Am I doing the right thing? Am I, Mr. Judge? Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem, you are. Now then, Miss Fay, you may proceed with your cross-examination. What I witnessed, part two. Truth is, Feeney pushed him twice. The first was into the electrical pole. That's when the cable broke. And Dougie tried his best to run away from him, but Feeney caught up and crashed into him from behind. The cable snapping and Dougie being electrocuted all occurred in less than a minute. Hmm. I mean, I've got to, I've got to go with the time of, uh, uh, yeah, the the time of death. The thing is, like the. Stopped at the time of death, and they said 3 p.m. It's like the, the numbers do not match up. But anyway, it's like this one because it's like the it can't have occurred in less than a minute. Objection! Been trying to present this for a while now. That's enough, witness. I'm afraid I don't understand. You will in a minute or five. <laughs> could this please? Could this please? Yeah, apparently. Could you please take a look at this picture? Oh, that medicine. That's the one Feeney likes to take for his coal. It's not the medicine I want you to look at. It's the wristwatch. It stopped at the precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05 p.m. Yes, and your point is, Miss Fay? My point is this. What time was it when the lab suffered the power outage due to the cables snapping? Well, according to the student's testimony, the answer is clear. It was 2.55 p.m. Ah! Would you care to explain to the court, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne, what exactly happened during this ten-minute interval? The defense proposes that it was during this interval that the real murderer killed Mr. Doug Swallow. Oh, it was a ten-minute gap, yeah. Order! Order! This is nonsense! The, the real murderer? How I got a low battery? I charged it before this. Even you can't deny that the time between the cable breaking and the electrocution are completely unaccounted for. Then who was it? Who else are you saying could have done it? There's only one person who could have murdered Mr. Swallow. Only after my client had left the scene. Was there a window of opportunity for the real killer? Miss Fay. Is the defense ready to indict someone as this real killer? It's finally time. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Yes, Your Honor. We are ready. Very well. But remember, if you accuse the wrong person, 
you will be penalized. Think very carefully before you speak, Miss Faye. Now then, Miss Faye, let's have it. Who is the real killer? The only one I can think of is her, so you know. It could only have been you, Dahlia Hawthorne. Where? Ha! How can you? The defense is grasping at straws. Ten minutes passed between the time the cable broke and the time of the electrocution. What exactly were you doing that whole time, Miss Hawthorne? Were you really listening to some music while cheering them both on as they thought? I find it hard to believe that you didn't lift a finger to stop the men dearest to you. Oh, oh she got quite emotional. Oh, da, oh, da, Miss Fay. What? I mean, why? Uh, that is to say, Miss Hawthorne, I believe you did witness the two men fighting on that day. However, after Mr. Wright pushed the victim and subsequently left the scene, it was you who pushed Mr. Swallow to his death by your very own hands. <laughs> How can you say something so mean, Madame Fay? I... I didn't do anything. Miss Fay, this is a very serious charge. All right. Your Honor. Please. Oh, God. I have something to say. Y you w What is it? Please. Please strike everything the defense said just now from the record. What the? Are you daft? Totally wrong, Miss Faye. Holy, she... She couldn't do something like that. It's emotional. Mr. Wright, get back in your seat. Bailiff, grab that man. Oh dear. Leave my dolly alone. Oh, poor Phoenix. Ah, that boy. He's got himself in way over his head. Oh, Mr. Crossberg, you're back. Seems I've arrived just in the nick of time. I found the police report on that incident in your newspaper clipping. Police report edited the court record. Uh -huh -huh -huh. Thank you so much. This is exactly what I was hoping for. You better take a good look at it. It uh, details how you came to lose your boyfriend. Now then, the defense has made a very serious accusation. Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, really, Your Honor, I, 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 that is I... Uh, May I interrupt you for just a moment, Mr. Prosecutor? Ah, don't, don't you worry, my dear. I have the situation well in hand. Sniffle. Uh, th that is, I, um, g g go right ahead. Madam Fay, are you seriously accusing me of killing my sweet doggy? Yes, I am. Not only am I saying you murdered Dog Swallow, but you also tried to pin the whole thing on your current lover, Phoenix Wright. I told you that you should let me handle this. We. Uh, sorry, uh, p please, please go ahead. How can you say that? I am absolutely devoted to my dear Feeny. The notion that I would try to frame him is ludicrous. This is all just too much for poor little me to bear. I believe the girl is trying to ask what on earth her motive would be. Answer to that lies somewhere in this police report. It must. Eight months ago, an incident occurred in the basement cafeteria of this building. And then, that same day, the two of them accidentally meet. Your Honor, the defense requests further testimony from Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. For further testimony? What about? So was it a murder, and the murder weapon is inside the bottle? That's what I'm thinking. About the events of the day when she first met the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What could that possibly have to do with this case? The witness claims that she has no reason to frame the defendant. Am I correct? 
but I have evidence that suggests that she, in fact, had a very good reason. Very well then. The court grants the defense's request. The young lady, would you mind staying on for just a bit longer? Of course not, Mr. Judge. Get ready for the battle of your life, Dolly Hawthorne. How I met my Feeny. I first met my darling Feeny eight months ago. It's like we were destined to meet in this very courthouse's basement reading room. Hmm. The moment our eyes met, my heart skipped a beat. Been going out ever since that fateful day. We're so lovey wovey, we literally make people sick. It's just jealousy, I think. Mr. Wright, do that again and you will be held in contempt of court. And now we enter the final act of our little drama. As we used to say in the days of my youth, go get her. Yes. I met my Feeny. The only one that, that, that caused me pause was the second one, because I'm thinking, like, why were you even in, in the basement? Like him, I could sort of understand. You first met my darling Feeny eight months ago. It's like we were destined to meet in this very courthouse's basement reading room. What were you doing there? The courthouse's reading room. That's a strange place to meet the love of your life. That's not true, Madame Fay. After all, Feeney was... Feeney was not only an art student, but... was also planning on becoming a lawyer. Yeah, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about you, Miss Hawthorne. What was a literature student like you doing in a courthouse reading room? This line of questioning is a waste of time. It has nothing to do with our murder case. Miss Fay, I'm warning you. If this has nothing to do with Mr. Swallow's case... I have to remember the judges on Dahlia's side. I better tread carefully. Keep pressing. Your Honor, if you'll allow me some latitude, or maybe some longitude, I think I can establish relevance. Please ask her to continue on with her testimony. Very well. Young lady, I've got a simple question for you. What were you doing downstairs in the courthouse reading room? If pleases, Your Honor. The answer is simply this. You buying yourself some time then to think of a reason. I had come to this courthouse to do some research for a paper I was writing. Okay. The moment our eyes met, my heart skipped to be Okay, so let's go back to that. It's gotta be something, gotta present something, I assume, at that point. Because it's like, it's led to that, and then we've done nothing with it, so... What have we got? What did we get when from thinking of a uh, report on the incident eight months ago? District Courthouse Cafeteria date time August 27th 4 p.m. Victim Diego Armando age 28. Occupation lawyer suspect Dahlia Hawthorne age 19. Armando ingested poison while interviewing the suspect regarding another case. That's what's in the bottom. Traces of poison were found in the victim's coffee cup. Now that's just the coffee. No poison was found in the vicinity on or on the suspect's person. It is unclear how the poison entered the victim's coffee cup. But he poured it in. It's coffee. It's, it's, it's a poison, right? Coffee? Yeah. Hmm. Is there anything else we could do at this point? It's the only thing relating to this moment that she's on about, so... Miss Hawthorne, you weren't here because of your research paper, were you? Didn't you actually come here for a much more important reason? What, what is the meaning of that cocky smile on your face, Miss Fay? Eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse, there was another tragedy. Another tragedy? Do you mean the incident in which an attorney was poisoned? The name of the suspect in that incident is listed here in this report. And that name is... Dahlia Hawthorne. What? Dahlia Hawthorne? Yes. The sweetie pie of everyone's eye. Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. She was the prime suspect in a criminal case just eight months ago. Oh, eight months? I was here that day. Order. 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 
This is unbelievable. It's true, then. The loveliest rose can... It's fair. That's not fair. I can't slander my witness. But... Um... I, uh, uh, Winston Payne will not allow it. M Mr. Prosecutor, I believe I was speaking. Uh, 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 pardon me, uh, go, go right ahead. It's true that about eight months ago, the police expressed some interest in me. Mm, expressed some interest, huh? Mr. Judge, sir, I know I'm under oath, so I'll tell you the absolute truth. I did not commit the crime that occurred during that instant eight months ago. I see. Okay. Tied the two crimes together. Now I've just got to stay on the offensive. Well done, Mia. Oh, ready to fire my heart. And my buttocks. Uh oh. I can hardly tell which is more inflamed my spirit or my hemorrhoids. Re really? 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 The poisoning. I met the lawyer who was poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. I left my seat for just a moment, and that's when it happened. From what I heard, it was a liquid poison that is lethal. I just tea two tea two two spoon tea two two spoon tea two two tea tea two two teaspoons. Not only that, I heard it was a very special kind of poison. So you see, I'm innocent. I wouldn't even know where to get a poison like that. Hmm. So that's what happened here eight months ago. However, as you heard from the witness's testimony, she had nothing to do with it. I think the defense is just about out of tricks. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Payne. But I'm afraid the defense has many more tricks up its sleeve today. And I'll be sure to show them to you before the end of this cross-examination. Yay! What the... Why does the defense suddenly feel stronger? Aha, Mia. You're glowing with a true lawyer's aura, my dear. A proud posture and self-confidence absolutely smashing. I think I've already got an idea on this one. The poisoning. I met the lawyer who was poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. I left my seat for just a moment and that's when it happened. From what I heard, it was a liquid poison that is lethal at just two, 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 two teaspoons, two teaspoons. Not only that, I heard it was a very special kind of poison. So you see, I'm innocent. I wouldn't even know where to get poison like that. Other than the fact you were dating someone who was a pharmacologist, or studying to be one anyway. Addiction! You wouldn't know how to get that kind of poison. I don't believe you. What? In fact, you had easy access to that kind of poison, didn't you? At your boyfriend's lab. But boyfriend? You yeah, I mean the victim, Dog Swallow. That's right. Up until eight months ago, Miss Hawthorne was dating Mr. Swallow. And if you'll recall, Mr. Swallow was a pharmacology student at Ivy University. For pharmacology? His laboratory contained highly advanced chemistry equipment. In fact, Without such equipment, the culprit could never have obtained such a rare and special poison. Well, Miss Hawthorne, it seems you had access to such a poison after all. And then it was a matter of slipping it into the victim's coffee when he wasn't looking. No matter, eh? The only person who could have done that was the one sitting at his very table. You. No! Oh, oh, battery, yeah. Order, order, order. C could it be? Oh, that's nothing but a baseless... May I say something, Madam Fay? What is it, Miss Hawthorne? The amount of poison in the coffee was two teaspoons, correct? In order to carry that much liquid, you would need some kind of container. Yes, you would, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, uh, that's true, uh... I was searched immediately after the incident took place. Quite true. In fact, the entire courthouse was turned upside down. But they didn't find a suspicious container anywhere, did they? She's right. They even mentioned that in the report. Well, you could have easily gotten rid of something like that small. Excuse me, madam, but 
This is a court of law. If you're saying that I threw the poison container away, I think you need to show some kind of proof. Proof? She could be good with that. Provide some evidence. I'll have to disallow this line of questioning, Miss Fay. Unless we can come up with some evidence, we're going to lose this lead. The police conducted a full body search of Dahlia and of the entire courthouse. And yet the container holding the poison disappeared right after the crime occurred. If you're going to accuse the young lady of committing the murder, then where is the container the poison was carried in? What happened to it? Yeah. You were forced to get rid of the container in a hurry, weren't you? And that's why you passed it on to someone that had nothing to do with this case. Someone that you knew wouldn't be searched. So who is this person? Mr. Phoenix Wright, of course. So the defendant was this witness's accomplice? Of course not. She gave the poison to him, disguised as a present. What? But, but that's... Hmm, that's a charming little necklace. Is this a little bottle? It's really quite cute. So what about it? What does it mean, Miss Faye? Come on. The day that the witness met and fell for Mr. Phoenix Wright was eight months ago. August 27th. The very same day as the poisoning incident. Under the pretense of love, the witness gave my client a present. All for the purpose of hiding the one piece of evidence that would give her away. What? Are you saying there's a deadly poison in here? No. There's no longer any poison in that bottle. However, I'm certain if the crime lab were to analyze it, they would find a trace amount. No! Get it to the lab! Order! Order, order in the corner. <clears throat> um. On behalf of Dolly, I object. Mr. Wright, control yourself. I won't let you bully her like this. Mr. Wright, that I told you to stay in your seat. Mr. Wright, why? Why are you going through so much trouble to protect her? Why? Because, because I'm madly in love with her. Hmm, hmm. Madly in love. I haven't heard anyone say that in a long time. Mr. Wright, have you ever thought about this? Why exactly would a woman like Donnie or Hawthorne want to date you anyway? Oh, Harsh? Well, guess she must be madly in love with me too. Mr. Wright, please open your eyes. At this point in the trial, I think it should be obvious to everyone. The real reason that Dolly Hawthorne is dating you is to keep you quiet. Mm, because of the necklace, though, it's like that, but like, to keep you quiet because you have the necklace, which is the more prominent one, is the, the necklace. So because of that necklace, Dolly Hawthorne was not and is not madly in love with you. The only thing she's after is that bottle necklace you love to wear around your neck. My necklace? Back there in the waiting room, you said it yourself. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. What a strange girl asking for a present back like that. For Dolly Hawthorne, that necklace is irrefutable evidence of her crime. That's why she absolutely had to get it back. You're lying! But you never gave it back to her. And to make things worse for her, you insisted on showing it to everyone you met. That's why she... I don't... I don't believe you. No, that's a lie! It's <laughs> quite rude to him, yes. Mia, are you right? Ah, the defendant! He's getting away! Bailiff, hurry! After him! 
Mia, Mia, are you all right? It, yes, I think so. Oh boy, he went completely insane. Where, where's Mr. Wright? Looks like the pain have caught him, so he should be back soon enough. Thank goodness. Oh no, what is it? The bottle necklace. Miss Hawthorne's present. It's gone. What? It's terrible. Mr. Wright must have grabbed it when he slammed into me. Foolish boy. It's the only thing that could have saved him. What in blazes are we supposed to do now? Thank you.